Hello everyone and welcome back to He Makes Me Play. I am Marius and I'm blind. I can't see and so I make other people play video games. And today I'm back with Vincent. Hello Vincent. Hello Marius. Yes, back to Disco Elysium and the church, isn't it? Yes. That's what we did last time. We woke up from like fighting with the mercenaries and Kim uh, uh, like nurturing us back to health. And we went mm -hmm. out, lit some stuff on fire <laughs> and we went to the church. Yeah. And actually we did some investigating and, and eventually we will go to the island, which feels very final, I have to admit. Yes. That that I, we, I don't feel like we might return from the island. Um, no, but we might it, not. I mean, we already, we, like we basically did everything in the game, right? Well, except the church, which is why we're doing that yeah. now. So let's get into it. Um, there's basically, there's a couple things here. But he is yeah. the most important one. You are correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, interfacing. I was just try, uh, looking up what kind of check that is. Yeah, we want to finish that track mm -hmm. using the pale sound. And that's an interfacing check, right? And exactly. we're going to dress up to do it. Yeah, even though I do remember we don't have a lot of stuff for interfacing. No, but we should, should check because this is so important. And uh, also we might have stuff that takes away from interfacing. Right, we don't have anything. Uh, we aren't wearing anything that is taking stuff away from interfacing, but come on, inventory! Don't let me down. This might be my least favorite part of this game. <laughs> then, but maybe this is only because of our specific playing setup. Yeah, I got to look at the cool clothes and stuff, play with them, play dress up doll with Harry. Really? Maybe I'd like it. Oh yeah, we have the gardening gloves. Exactly. That, of that's course. The one thing we have for interfacing, and that's yeah, it. what's better to operate an interface than to put on gardening gloves? Makes perfect sense. Yeah. And then we need to put a point. How many do we have? Right. We have two points, and so, one of them yeah. Yeah. goes into interfacing. Mm -hmm. There it is. Just... Oh yeah, that's also. Um, we can only put two more points into it. Right, that's that's the real limit. If we mm -hmm. haven't gotten it by then, we don't deserve to get it ever. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's do this. But, I, I mean, the chance also yeah. went up now, so... Right. It's what is the chance? 42%. <laughs> that's still so bad. Yeah, we have still plus one from Andres' comp yeah. uh, compression algorithm, plus one from fiddled with some, some knobs, mm. minus one, lied about secret audio tech. Yeah, we were so stupid. And another plus one, solved Arno van Eyck. Yeah. So let's do it. Here we go. Come on. Here's a knife. <laughs> of course not. Say what you said before. Yeah, yeah let's exactly. just not say anything. Because yeah. Yeah. we'll get punished. Say something that's only marginally different. <laughs> It will yield a drastically different outcome. But we've said everything. Yeah. So just, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah thanks, Egghead. For sure, but the digital okay, uh, we'll, talk, we'll be right back, Egghead. Well, hold on, hold on. Yes. Wasn't mm -hmm. there another interfacing check here? We should capitalize on it. What about the catching the bird? Or was uh, that a different skill? I Let's check with the girl. There was reaction speed? Let's see. I want to do that as well. I mean, it sucks. I want to do everything. Well, Azel was her name? Yes, Azel. Yeah. We're on our way. Hardcore. That is reaction speed indeed. And we cannot do it right now? No. Okay. Um, we have a new option with her. Oh, what is it? We can say, I got shot in the leg. Oh, and sure. We can point at our limb. <laughs> yeah, do it. I don't know why, but do it. Ouch. I did notice you limping, but I thought maybe it was your thing or something. <laughs> oh. Uh, she also she opened the conversation with hard cop. She nods mm. to you with respect and turns yeah, off her recording. Yeah, because we dance device. and stuff, right? Yeah, or because she heard about the stuff at the world mm, in Maybe, yeah. yeah. Well, let's continue. When I was 16, I used to date this guy who had a limp. But it only showed when he was sober. So I guess it wasn't real or something. I don't know. She shrugs. Eyes glazed over. Mm. Anyway, shot in the leg. I'm sorry. Man, that must suck. Yeah, kind of does. Yeah. Uh, but that's it. Nothing does it give there. a bonus? Mm, no. no. Okay. Do you want to talk to Zona just to check sure. if there's something new with her? Yes. What is it? <laughs> no. Charming. Nothing new there. Do you want to um, 
assign responsibility <laughs> and do the thing with I think either Noid or Andre where we oh. talk to the Zeppelin right yeah sure it might change things with the tests here let's talk to Noid no, man. what's on your mind uh, we can say okay now I'm ready yeah let's contact Archer I am really ready rest of the crew has got to stay here can't afford to let the beat drop right as we're getting off the ground. What? What's he saying? Uh, rest of the crew has, rest of the crew yeah. has got to stay here. He what? gives you a solid. Where are nod. we going? I didn't know we're going anywhere. Uh, I, well, we were talking about an antenna before, right? So I guess we're going to the antenna. Yeah, either. Okay. <laughs> I guess to the statue or to the antenna at Glasgow, but probably the statue. Well, let's see. I'm done with anything. Yeah. Good luck, guys. Thanks. Try to squeeze in a promo spot while you're on air. <laughs> We've got to start putting the word out. Back across the water now. At least we're getting our exercise in today. <laughs> <laughs> Not a fan of running, still. You can grab that amplifier, officer. And you start spawning up those cables. Maybe we can get it all in one go. And we fade to black. All right. Where are we going? This is interesting. We are loading. Oh, we're looking at our car. Okay. So we're we using Kim's radio? No, our car. Our car, yeah. Which is crashed. Mm -hmm. okay. And we have connected some cables uh, <laughs> to it and a battery. And we are following the cables. They run to the water lock. And they're like patched at multiple locations uh -huh. and um, the extensions and then there's a yeah it's, it's a it's a patchwork yeah exactly that's it's that's a work of it's art. Di a DIY transmission system mm -hmm. that's and cool now we're at the statue and Noid is in uh, yeah it has climbed up to the the rider yeah and What's he doing though? Uh, Holding the antenna? No, he's balancing on one of the um, iron rods that connects the horse with the um, base of the statue. Right. And he has like a long staff of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, and the top of it looks almost like um, one of these old microphones. Okay. Um, and he's holding it down to, I guess, us. But we'll see. Ah, that's where we speak into. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just plug that in there, would ya? Ah, okay. It's done. I believe we are ready. The lieutenant wipes his bow, brow. Yeah, as ready as we're gonna be. Grab one of these can sets, both of ya. I've got it rigged so we can all listen, but only your cop talk will broadcast. All right. No idea what we're gonna hear when I turn this thing on, so be prepared for anything. Trick is to keep transmitting your request until the big bad acknowledges you. You got that? I guess that's the trick, Vincent. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Uh, he's now uh, set up a, yeah, not a DJ station, but a um, I can, uh, communication a mixer. station yeah, okay. next to the statue. Uh, I like that. And we can say, number one, wait, what if they never acknowledge me? Hmm. Or number two, Yes. Or number three, hold on, I need a moment. It's a wait option, so let's take it. Although mm -hmm. it is gratuitously negative. Honestly, that might be for the best. <laughs> like I said, the signs coming off this whole project are seriously uncharted. Have we ever cleared our sign with Noid? I believe we did, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then I think this will be... This will work out fine. At least so as well. But I, I think there was also a prequel to this whole quest yeah Something. sure but we're cool with noise also have we heard there's this new music, music. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was just gonna say the same thing no it's new nice i don't know why this sort of slightly obscure plot line gets <laughs> in its own track but i like it it sounds very hopeful it sounds very moral in turn mm -hmm. yeah well let's see where it goes yeah don't know how much juice we've got so we better get to it you ready sure hit me we say yes good we live two one. 
Okay, I was wondering because I could click continue from the moment the noise started, uh -huh. but I was wondering it's just gonna loop. Maybe oh, we'll see. A soft rustling. The snow seems to have gotten between your ears somehow. Hmm. <laughs> Funny. It, me it means the noise. Mm -hmm. It's like snow, right? Yeah. White noise. Um, we can say number one. Where's the sound coming from? To ourselves? Or to, to Shivers, the one that was speaking. Mm. Or we can ignore it. Where's the sound coming from? Every light switch, every motor carriage, every doorbell, tea kettle, and radio in Martinez, all mingled with electrical interference caused by scattered thunderstorms over Ozone. Hey, no man, we're waiting on ya. And we can say number one. What should I say? Uh, number two. Coalition Warship Archer. This is RCM Officer Firewalker. Please acknowledge. <laughs> number three. Coalition Warship Archer. This is RCM Officer Tequila Sunset. Please acknowledge. <laughs> number four. Coalition Warship Archer. This is Detective Rafael Ambrosius Cristo. <laughs> there, that, of, that's good. good yeah. Okay. Of the RCM. Please acknowledge. Sorry. And then finally, number five. Coalition Warship Archer. This is Lieutenant Harrier Dubois of the RCM. Please acknowledge. Who are we? <gasps> Was Firewalker like a bullshit thing or is that our actual call sign? I think we made that up when we talked on the radio the first time. <laughs> I do like it though. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, mean, I kind of don't want to take the most boring option. So, Firewalker? Uh, Firewalker it is. Nice. You're all alone out there, wandering a blasted eth, calling out to the night. But there is no reply, except for the buzzing of invisible machines. The lieutenant looks up at you with a nervous glance. He is nervous for your sake, of course, but also his own. Looking at him now, with both hands on his headphones, you see very briefly what the lieutenant must have been like when he first joined the RCM. Aww. Hmm. Really? Why? What was he like? Nervous, probably. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. And unsure of his partner? <laughs> <laughs> well, because I guess we're talking to a higher authority. Hmm. They're yeah. literally higher, up in the sky. Yeah. So, yeah. Then he turns to you. He gives you a half smile, along with an almost imperceptible nod of encouragement. Nice. Give it another go. And now we only have one option. We can say, Coalition Warship Archer. This is Firewalker. Right, we are locked in. That's fine. I was German. Huh, yeah, all of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we can reply, Hello, Archer, do you acknowledge? Marianne hat mir erzählt, dass Oscar nicht mehr derselbe ist, seit er auf einem Luftschiff aus Graz zurückgekommen ist. Natürlich halten wir die Psychologen für vollkommen normal. So, Vincent, shall we like do some exposition on this? Because the game isn't doing it. <laughs> sure. I like the I first message was just like, uh, like, no, dear, and then something about a boy, and uh, now it was talking about Oscar, who has returned from an airship from Grad, uh, and has not been the same ever since then, uh, according to someone called Marianne. Yeah. And the psychologists say that he's fine. But Marianne says that he's not the same. It's like living with a different person, mm -hmm. which is like a little bit of drama. Uh, that's interesting, I thought, told in a German voice. Yeah. So here you get it explained just from us. H have we heard German before in the game? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, lots of different languages yeah. have some representation, right? French, uh, lots of things feel very French. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I, there's also like I've never seen like Japanese or something. Yeah. I don't True. know. But yeah, this was sort of out of the blue. <laughs> yeah. Also, like, just such a block of text and story. 
Yeah. Hunter, let's see where it takes us. You can't make out a word of this gibberish. Uh, <laughs> well, I beg to differ, game. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that, that was a formidable failure in rhetoric. Ah, uh, sure. And Our we, character, maybe. Yeah. Do Not we, us. We can ask, what does this remind me of? Or number two, I can't understand a word of this gibberish. <laughs> or number three, what's going on? Or we can just keep listening. Mm, what does this remind me of might help. The rustling of dry autumn leaves, waves breaking at a distance, a thousand wings beating at once. I really like this music. Yeah, me too. All right. Now, now there's like some form of singing. Kind of. Well, just, I guess melody, I would say. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's cool. It feels like it's building to something. Mm -hmm. But it also feels like, I don't know, a Philip Glass track or something. <laughs> it's very repetitive. Um, what else? Hmm. Now, now I wonder if it's, is a melody just added at a specific time in the dialogue we are working through? Mm, I do wonder as well. Huh. It might be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Still, the other three options. Uh, I can't understand mm. a word of this gibberish. What's going on? Or keep listening. Yeah, sure. Say I can't understand. Dear, please, he's our only child. He could go to the academy next year. Wonderful. She's sort of pleading. Me neither. Just keep trying. We'll get through these radio spookers eventually. And again, we repeat. Coalition Worship Archer, this is Firewalker. If you're there, Archer, please acknowledge. Right. Again. Coalition Warship Archer, this is Firewalker. He Do said this is the trick. Acknowledge. Just keep saying it. Yep. It's cold now. What did he say? It's good now? It's cold now. Ooh, that's scary. Um, also, apparently Kim said that. What? That's what the... But mm -hmm. it didn't sound like him. Kim is the speaker here. Uh, okay. Don't know. A slight frisson at the point where your neck meets your spine. Something about the lieutenant's words directed at you, but not you. So he did say it. Yeah, I guess. But it sounded like it came from, uh, you know, the headphones. Yeah. And it didn't make any sense. In so is it like Kim said this in the past and it's been going through the airwaves? Mm -hmm. Oh, in the future? <gasps> Yeah, and this whole game is so much about like receiving transmissions and all that stuff. Yeah, um, and it might we, be. We have talked about uh, death is not the end and all that. Sure, time is a loop stuff before. It's cold now is also such a portentous phrase to say. Like, what is cold? The case, our dead body. Mm. This is from an alternate reality where we died during the mercenary attack. Yeah, or is it just? Uh, focused in this situation because it is snowing at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just the literal meaning of it. Uh, yeah, it is I actually cold now. The temperature is very low. Yeah, I is. like your take on things, Vincent. That is weird. Uh, and we can say, Kim, don't clock my connection, or it's really coming down now that you mention it. Hmm. Um, I don't want to tell Kim not to do stuff. So number two. Mm -hmm. Mention what? Yeah, he didn't say that. That's the thing. You're <laughs> hearing things, Harry. <laughs> um, we have only the option to say, it's cold, like you just said. Yeah. I didn't say anything, detective. Someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. That's totally Kim. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This is weird. Whoa. What uh, wiring? Mm, is, mm. I wish we could talk to the, the headphone Kim. Is that something we have heard him say before? Yeah, I wire? bet. I bet that's these are all lines he says at some obscure skill check in some deep, deep dialogue tree in the game. Maybe it's cold now. Someone has been maintaining it. I mean, oh, we, we uh, might have heard him say. I think that's say. the fridge in the abandoned business area, maybe. That's a very good idea. Yeah, he, pro he probably did say that. And it was, you know, last year when we played this game. Yeah. <laughs> and we right. just don't remember. 
Yeah, but it would also sort of work because there was like open wiring and maybe it's just yeah. It's like, it, he it's says back. it's cold now. Mm -hmm. When we plugged it back in, right? And then we test the fridge, and he's like, "Yeah, it's working now. It's cold now." Mm -hmm. And maybe uh, he's uh, the my wiring's been man maintained is like when we first inspect the fridge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Good. Good investigating, Grinson. Let's okay. move on. An uncomfortable silence falls over the connection. It's been a long winter. Long and cold. Now that sounds too hmm. poetic for me. Yeah. That's, that's still weird. Are they all hearing it, or is it just us that's hallucinating? Might just be us. Well, the other two don't seem to react. Uh, we can say, are you going to tell me you didn't say that either? Or we can say, Maybe it's your twin brother. <laughs> no, do number one. I want them to acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. I promise you I didn't. Okay. Even though it certainly sounds like me. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. So they are hearing it. Yeah. Uh, the lieutenant seems to wince at the sound of his own voice. We all know that feeling. Um, yeah, it goes away. <laughs> <laughs> then we ask, what is happening? Sounds like your partner's being haunted by his past self. Or maybe he's trying to warn himself from the future, most like. I don't know much about radios. What? I, I thought you were the expert. I don't think there's anything to do with radios at this point. Yeah. Well, maybe. I don't know. It's certainly weird. I just want to hear more, though. Mm hmm. I just want to finally listen to Archer. Yeah. Mm. The coalition wash. Right, there was that. Kind of got <laughs> dropped into the background in my mind. Yeah. yeah. What else? It's just a little bit of pale interference, detective. A oh, little eerie, perhaps, but perfectly explicable. Of course, the pale. That's always behind these mysterious things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Now it all makes sense. <laughs> I love how he's just <laughs> fine with it. Oh, it's just the pale talking yeah. <laughs> in my voice to me, saying ominous things. Uh-huh. I'm not fine with it. <sighs> Outwardly, the lieutenant exudes reassurance. But you can sense a lingering doubt in his voice. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. he 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 knows he knows that this is weird, just like we do. I love how we're so empathetic. This was a good character <laughs> to play. <laughs> yes, oh, that right. that was composure actually. But yeah, yeah but sense, with, with yeah. Em I don't mean empathy the skill. I just mean mm -hmm. in general we're very sort of connected and yeah. have all these social skills. Okay. That was a repeat, she said. Of course, the psychologists think he's completely normal. And we can say, maybe we should try again later. Or we can say, so what can we do about it? Number two, what can we do? You just have to embrace the spookiness. <laughs> now give it another go. All right. And we sigh and say, Coalition Worship Archer, <laughs> do you acknowledge this is Firewalker? <laughs> but someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. Walker, please acknowledge it. And we say, Archer, this is Firewalker. Can you hear me? <laughs> she has like the sound effect that he would give like a ghost and stuff uh -huh. in movies <laughs> which I guess is maybe supposed to be eerie but here just seems sort of comical <laughs> the Kim stuff was way more uh -huh. creepy yeah okay what did she say in the last one uh, worship Archer please identify okay well the signals are getting increasingly mixed plucking Archer's signal from this will be like isolating a single strand from a tangle of hair that was an impossible failure for interface. <laughs> okay. I wonder what the success would have said. Uh, I don't know. Man, we put so much into interfacing and we just keep <laughs> failing it. Yeah, we suck smart uh. at it. This isn't looking good. The radio spookers are winning. What can we do? Yeah. Don't know. If we can't get around the interference, we're in deep trouble. <laughs> Hold on. I think Ed gave me some sort of checklist. 
<laughs> Why didn't we bring egg along? Yeah, that's exactly Seriously, that if you're no radio expert, <laughs> yeah. why what isn't egg here? here? I'm sure egg would know what to do. <laughs> like 100%, I would yeah. trust egg's competence in Damn this case. Yeah. I would never ever let him anywhere close <laughs> to the mic, but I would do whatever he told me to. Yeah, and what the hell is Noid doing here? Well, I guess he did wire it up. Thanks, Noid. But and honestly, isn't like three to maybe four people in the church enough? <laughs> Couldn't we have... Uh, anyway, let's not uh, enrage ourselves. Yeah. What else? Hmm. Says here, main step, volume to the max. That's not too helpful. Okay. <laughs> it also says, inspect connections for hardcore clarity. So let's try that. I'm okay. sure. Like that all the steps from Attack are in all caps. <laughs> because <laughs> of course. <laughs> and they're also about maximum and hardcore. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, so we ask, how am I supposed to inspect the connections? My guess, you climb up the centaur, man. See if there's anything obviously interfering with them. Maybe you've got some technical law science. Oh, crap. We're going to break our neck. Isn't, yes. isn't that what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Ugh. This isn't exactly your area of expertise, though. Someone has been maintaining it. Come on, son. This isn't anything but a common high bar. Just get a <laughs> solid overhand grip and hoist yourself. Ah, sporty talk. Mm -hmm. Is that a physical instrument? Yeah. Yes. Images of your body smashed against <laughs> you flood your mind. This is dangerous. At half light. Uh, Inland Empire. Oh, mm. yeah, but when did that ever discourage us? Exactly, yeah. Uh, we can say, uh, number one, but I don't know what I'm doing. Number two, but what if I slip and fall? All this negativity. Or, okay, let's do this. Yeah, let's do this. The monument. Yeah, do it. Fade to black. Oh, we have an animation. <laughs> He's climbing. I mean, it wasn't Climbing a red check. No. Okay, he's moved past the base into the uh, iron rods. And he's about halfway up. He's doing quite well so far. And he has reached the horse. Now he's sort of unsure where to go. <laughs> No, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, what are you gonna do? Your gloves give you a solid grip on the metal bar. Oh. Huh. This feels pleasingly familiar. Nice. Good uh, thing we got those gardening gloves. Yeah. That was an item that really has done some heavy lifting for us. <laughs> yeah, we've got it so early. <laughs> yeah, we've worn it basically for the entire game. Yeah. Uh, so at the moment we're hanging from the lowest leg of the uh, horse. Okay. Keep it together, champ. You've got this. How big is this statue? Uh, also, could, can Harry do one pull-up? I doubt uh, it. Well, n that, that's... <laughs> yeah, I agree with you there. Yeah. He's sort of... If he, if he did it, <laughs> it might be his last one. Forever. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it's just, so he, he continued climbing up, right? yeah. and then... Um, and before you know it, you're safely perched atop the monument. We've did it. Um, but the way it looked was he, he um, basically moved behind the horse mm -hmm. for us, right? And then the first thing that came up into his vision, uh, our vision again, was his leg, like stretching out. And then he, he's climbing sort of backwards. I'm like, what, did you, what are you doing, Harry? <laughs> but yeah, now he's, uh, he's not shy to make a fool of himself. No. Uh, and he had success. Uh, we are standing atop the horse. Yeah, but is that a success? I mean, it is for a five-year-old who likes to climb things. <laughs> I, I'll grant you that, but can we actually do something useful here? Uh, good question. Uh, we can say, did you see that bar work? Or we, <laughs> or we can Man, examine poser. the connection. Yeah, <laughs> examine. The connection itself is nothing more than a little braid of exposed wire wrapped about the hoof of the horse. A copper fetter, it cannot slip. The whole monument is covered in a thin but durable layer of oil and grime. It's mm. obvious no one has cleaned it in years. Well, what's it look like? 
Are we still wearing headphones? I guess so. Okay. I mean, he could just talk to us. No, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> why do I even question? <laughs> oh. Um, we can say, uh, the whole statue is uh, covered in weird oils. I don't think it's good for the connections. Weird oils? It's like he's never been outside before. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is this climbing <laughs> you speak of? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's a strange feathered creature sitting on you. <laughs> uh, Any other options? The other option is, uh, the connections look fine to me. Let's talk about the oil. Yes, we've got that from a... Medium success yeah. in perception, so there's a reason why. Mm. That's not good. We should have cleaned the sensor <laughs> on that first. Pretty rude that we didn't. Hang on, I'm looking at XG None of this makes sense, <laughs> but I guess we're gonna bend the antenna. But how are you gonna bend the hoof? I guess I have no idea. I need lots of strength. Yeah. Well, for now we can see either what are we supposed to use to bend the antenna? Okay. Or what good is that supposed to do? No, I don't want to question Egg's instructions. Just ask how we can implement them. Mm -hmm. Says here. Muscle style. <laughs> okay, and that leaves only the other option. What good is that supposed sure. to do? Hmm. Good question. Maybe he's saying we're casting too wide a net. Maybe we There's no turning Ooh. back now. There's a responsibility. Yes. Again. So, we have a red check. Of course. Which we're bad at. Interfacing? Of course it's interfacing. Our favorite skill. Our arch nemesis. I would yeah. Say. Interfacing, godly, 16. Attempt to narrow the receiving mode <laughs> manually. Wow. And we have a plus one from solid grip. Okay. Plus one from eye for sculpture. Oh. And We're an art cop. Hey. Minus two because oh. anti-object prejudice. Oh, fuck off, man. That that was a... That thought <laughs> hasn't done anything for us, honestly. What was the point of that? Man. Okay. I don't know why this makes me so angry. I guess I want this check. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have four other options. We can look at Philippe the Third. We can look at mm. the horse. We can look up and we can look down. Yeah, let's um, uh, develop some... Um, appreciation for this object yes. and that will get rid of the minus. So look at Philippe. Maybe. You are face to face with Philip the third. The bronze king looks toward the west. Something about his features seems bizarrely distorted. His imperious gaze leads you naturally to his outstretched hand, which for some reason strikes you as sadly empty. You can't help but feel that saber you picked up might just give this old king a little more panache. Oh yeah, better reception. Yeah, that's so oh. that's so smart. But I love that. Let's put the saber in the hand, Vincent. But I like the saber. No, it's done its purpose. Come on, you can't hit people with it anyway. Yeah, we, I guess this is got what it's supposed. Back. Everything has its destiny, Vincent, yes. and this okay. is the destiny of the saber. Okay, attach the saber. Here we go. Take it back. To your surprise, the saber's hilt fits quite snugly in the statue's hand. The king cuts quite the triumphal figure now. Nice. That's awesome. There is no way that is going to make any difference. That's where you're wrong, Kim. Yeah. I mean, if this king is our antenna, Adding a little bit extra to an antenna. Uh, I do believe it might change things. Yes. Maybe it won't help, but no. it will change things. Yes. Ah, every bit helps. Exactly. We need this antenna to be as hardcore as humanly possible. See, I really like the attitude of the speed freaks. And we get a plus two. Saber actually does help. Ha! Nice. That's physics, Kim. You, you were right. They are uh, the the. 
looking at Philippe the third uh, negated the. Majesty. Oh really? So yeah. we've got a, a a total of plus four. No, but it's now we have a plus two and a minus two. That so. Oh, they cancel oh I see what you mean. Okay. But I still want to get rid of the minus two. Is there, are there more dialogue options? Uh, yes, we can look at the horse. We can look up and we can look down. This is all very good. Look at the horse. This look at my horse. This steed is in nearly as poor a condition as its rider. Okay, so much for that. My horse is amazing. <laughs> Give it a link. It takes us bloody amazing. Stay on target, man. Yeah, sorry. I couldn't <laughs> help that. Uh, so then we look up. <laughs> The sky is grey and overcast. Snow spirals all around you. Through the scrim, you can just make out the shadow of Coalition Warship Archer a few kilometers to the east. Didn't change anything? Okay, and look down. Finally, look down. Oh, does that make things harder? Because it makes us scared. Mm. Oh, crap. Sometimes there are these traps. It makes you really not want to interact with the game. <laughs> yeah. So do we do it? Do yeah, we what do, do you it? think? I th mm, we're at 42%. If we get a minus, we're at like, something in the 25 that, That's range. good tactical thinking. Are we the underdog? Then we should take the risk. And if we're not the underdog, we should not take the risk. I think as long as we're below 50%, mm -hmm. I would consider us the underdog. Yes. And I say we take the risk. Here we go. Okay. A few of the idle lorry drivers and strike breakers gesture at you with their cigarettes more out of curiosity than anything else. From the window of one of the adjacent apartment buildings, an older woman leans out, her heavy breasts sagging. She yells a single word you can't make out and then shuts the window with a violent thunk. Down below, a little doll-sized lieutenant is looking up, shielding his eyes. He's worried for you. Oh, man, I didn't know we we're so high. We're not that high. <laughs> I mean, doll sized. Sounds yeah, pretty high to me. It's, it's like 10 meters off the ground. Well, it would be a pretty nasty fall. That's true, yeah. Easily be deadly. S uh, that didn't give us anything, sadly. Well, man, there's nothing more we can do, I think. 42%. Come on. Just one interface. Yeah, check. come on. Please. We can do this. Hey! Yes! That's good. Oh, nice. he's moving. Actually he's climbing the head. the statue. <laughs> okay, he's bending the head of the statue backwards. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. And further. And... Your grip is firm, yet mm -hmm. controlled. The swelling in your headset guides your hands as much as your hands guide the bronze horse head. It's almost like you're hearing through the horse itself. Looks like it's working. Keep going. Just a bit more. Nein, Liebling. The signal is clear. The storm has passed. This is another voice. A live voice on the other end of this invisible bridge you've established. Try it now. And again, we say, Coalition Warship Archer, this is RCM Officer Firewalker. Please acknowledge. Mm -hmm. Camera zooming out. We are still standing atop this statue, holding the head. And we are now seeing the, the whole of the roundabout uh -huh. of lor lorries and the, uh, our two companions. I'm so tense. Firewalker, this is Coalition Warship Archer. We are acknowledging and accepting you. Huh. Alright. That, that was very clear. That's another interesting portrait as well. Oh, really? Can yeah. you describe her? Um, so, uh, the gist of it is there's like a circle in the middle. Mm -hmm. In the middle is a um, face. like um, Inside of the circle? Yeah, but basically, like there's a head, and you just cut uh, um, just the, the the face out of it mm -hmm. um, with just the eyes. <laughs> it's the a smiley face. Um, no, it's it's a real face. Okay. Um, with, well, real. Um, it's grayish, and uh, the colors are a bit off, but overall, it's um, it's a normal face, just in the okay. middle of a 
circle, and then around the circle there's a, a white figure, basically, um, that looks like a human, mm -hmm. um, like a cutout of a human. Okay. Um, Maybe it's supposed to represent, you know, that w we have sort of a connection to her that's interfered, mm -hmm. right? We don't get the full 3D sound image of her voice, so we just get a cutout visual image as well. Yeah. Um, and then around this and through this uh, white figure, uh, black lines that look like there's um, uh, like there's something in f uh, in the foreground in front of this person we are seeing. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, at least, it looks like one of these old radio microphones that is right, yeah. like hanging. Uh, I know like exactly what you mean. Yeah. What an announcer in a wrestling or boxing mm -hmm. match might have. Exactly. Yes. Um, and then around the white figure is uh, a blue uh, background, and that ends finally in white. At the very okay. Top. Does she look friendly? Uh, or I expressionless? Expressionless. I see. Yeah. Really. That fits. Yeah. All right. Uh, so she said, Firewalker, this is Coalition Washu Archer. Archer, we are acknowledging and accepting you. That's very kind of her. It's so nice to finally be accepted. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. This is what I needed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. There it is. The big bad. Now be quick. I'll keep us alive and as long as I can. This is it. You're finally getting to speak with those who hold real power. And by that, we mean the ones with the guns and the warships. There is so much you wish you could ask. Your efforts have bought you some time, but you can't forget what you're really here for. What are we really here for? Remind me, Vincent. Uh, something... Responsibility. responsibility. Oh yeah, we wanted to take responsibility and build a committee, <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah. To I clean up Martinus or something, yeah. right? Possibly, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Please be advised that you're speaking on a public frequency. What is your request? Uh, okay, we can ask. Number one, who am I speaking with? Number two, what does Ravashol look like from up there? <laughs> <laughs> Number three, what does the moral intern really want? Number four, when is real democracy coming to Ravashol? And finally, listen, I really need to reach the committee of responsibility. And we yeah. proceed. Ah, okay, proceed option. Then mm -hmm. we can probably do the other ones, because <laughs> I do want to hear our response. Ask uh -huh. who you're speaking to. You are currently speaking with Coalition Worship Archer, flagship of Insurcom Forces in Revachon. Okay, this person has no personal identity no. of any kind. Absolutely not. All right. Just like the portrait showed. Sure. Uh, we can ask, are you the captain? Or number two, whoa, the Coalition has talking warships? Or number three, sure, but who are you? I need to know your name. Do that one. Our name is not important. All you need to know is that we hold the position of second signaler aboard the She's speaking of herself in the third person. Our name is not important. But that's not the third person, though. It's like, well, uh, and she doesn't mean herself. She means the worship or the coalition, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. I see. Yeah. You really don't have the faintest guess what her name could be. <laughs> you were never very good at this sort of thing. What is this sort of thing? <laughs> that that was Inland Empire with godly failure. Okay. What is it with random, really, really hard passive checks today that we always fail? Well, maybe because we're at that point in the game, right? It's just difficult. Yeah, but... Yes, sure, but they just... That hasn't ha happened nearly as much before. Yeah, maybe. I don't, know. Yeah. I don't know. There's something in the way she refers to herself always with the first person plural. Oh, man, game. A Come on. Blurring of the boundary between herself and the institution <laughs> she represents. Th this is it. this is my version <laughs> of being creeped out by hearing Kim in the radio waves. That the game just sort of telepathically understands what we're talking about. Uh huh. This is this is weird. Yeah. yeah. Not to mention the airborne artillery platform she works on. Her every word is backed up by the most powerful ordnance available. Mm. Yeah. Also, I'm listening to the Adventure Zone, and there's giant ship 
in that RPG session, session and everybody on board is a hive mind. So <laughs> well. That sounds like adventure, though. <laughs> is it an airship, though? Uh, no, it's a submarine. All right. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Um, so we can say number one. Just one thing. Why do you keep referring to yourself with a plural? I don't know if we should go on about that. Or number two. What's it like <laughs> being a second signal? Second signal? Signaler. Ah, okay. That's the two options? Yeah, that's the two options. Um, <laughs> what do you, lo what what do you want man, What is less trolly? <laughs> In that case, do number one, I think. Because it's standard practice for signalers to use the pluralis officialis during the course of our duties. Oh, it's nice. meant to serve as a reminder that we don't speak only for ourselves. Mm. Pluralis officialis, I guess. Mm -hmm. I never heard that. I know. I just knew pluralis maestatis, which I used all throughout gymnasium. <laughs> Wait, wh what is that? Uh, we think that our subjects oh, should yeah, eat yeah. cake, mm -hmm. right? Makes sense. makes sense to everyone. Mm -hmm. But officialis is basically just yeah, the bureaucratic version yeah. of that, I guess. Anyway, what else? For instance, as second signaler, we represent collision multi partner which in turn represents INSURCOM and the coalition more generally, which in turn represents the Moralist International, which itself represents the interests of 1.2 billion people across the world. That's a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Meaning, she's the voice of all those living souls. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like inland. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. Uh, and we can say, number one, so when I'm talking to you, it's like I'm talking to all of humanity. That's from inland. We're going to say that. Uh -huh. uh, the second option is, sounds like kind of a hard job. Or number three, <laughs> it sounds like an awesome responsibility. These are all good. Mm. I like all of them. But I like inland best. Yes. So we have to take number one. All of humanity. No, of course not. There are many nations outside the moral interest umbrella. Oh. Sale, Samara, <laughs> and elsewhere. Of course. At most, you might say the moral inter represents between a quarter and a third of humanity. Okay, yeah. She's being precise about it, but she completely acknowledges yeah. that, yes, uh -huh. of our, the nations that are subject to our governance, uh, I totally represent these souls. Yes, also what do you okay. want? <laughs> Did she say that? No. Yeah, I mean, but she's not, she doesn't sound pissed off by us yet. No. We're so that's good. Working on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perhaps you could say that we represent the interests and hopes of a great many people. But you could say, just as easily, that we are the assistant to the secretary of a factotum. No more remarkable than the lowest cashier of a common fleet. Okay, we're it being humble as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so we can ask who is the secretary or who is the factorum? Yeah, who is factorum. secretary? The chief signaler, our superior. They are ultimately responsible for all communications aboard the Arthur. But now we've wandered quite far afield. What was your request? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we haven't gotten there yet, but let's ask, ask some more questions. I mean, how busy can she be <laughs> up there, honestly? Yeah. If it's this hard <laughs> to talk to them, like, I don't know. Yeah, she I mean, gets a lot of traffic. We ask her, hey, are you representing all of humanity? And she goes into like three paragraphs of, well, sort of, but not really. We are only representing about a quarter. So, I mean, she does sound kind of bored. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so we have the other uh, options. What does Robert Scholl look like from up there? Mm. What does the moral intern really want? When is real democracy coming to Ravashol? And finally, the proceed option. Yeah, I want to do all of these, so take the next one. What does Ravashol look like from That's up there? really trolling. <laughs> Let's mm -hmm. see. Mm, that's difficult to say. We have a very particular view from our observation platform up here. And we can ask particular how or what can you see? Particular how? Perhaps the best way to describe it it is to say we have a very wide perspective. But, not an especially detailed one. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's a metaphor for uh -huh. something. <laughs> uh, well, what can you see? Oh, it looks quite lovely from here. From our portal, we see rolling hillsides covered with snow, a public park filled with grand oak trees, men and women going about on horses. <laughs> I've just... never seen a horse. 
<laughs> with the person on it that's real or have we Vincent uh where are the well, horses in this game that's a good question <laughs> anyway I mean maybe they died in the revolution yeah I don't want to sidetrack there are children building a snowman by a small pond. Oh, she's so... The homes and gardens are quite beautiful. Very near, like those in certain areas of the you know. Oh, man. Vincent, she's never actually looked. <laughs> we just made her yeah. actually look and <laughs> look at the view. She just sort of uh -huh. laughed a little at yes. the children. Okay, that's good. We have to, like, get on her, <laughs> on her humanity side, you know? Mm -hmm. Get her out of her shell of just <clears throat> being this hollow bureaucratic automaton. Yes. We don't have the name that would be helpful, but this is good. Yeah, we have a goal now. What 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 else? Uh, we can ask, where are you exactly? Or we look around and say, huh, I don't see any of that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that was my thinking. Uh, do the where are you? We cannot say for certain. If it must be, we have only recently been data to the Archer, so we are still learning the names of all the many districts. She needs to see you down here yeah that's the only way she'll really get what you're about hmm. and we can ask can you see martinez from where you are martinez martinez that is to the west yes and we can say number one yes look <laughs> across the river esperance or number two i thought it was to the south mm. or number three nope it's to the north definitely north how do we know <laughs> How do we... What's the right answer? Well, Fuck. Do we need to... Did, did should we have taken notes or something? Didn't you listen to Shivers? Well, what did it say, Vincent? Yeah. I, so, I that river, is that something we should know? Uh, I, I think the... Esperance? I think that's the water body right next to us, basically. But is that a river or is that a sea? Um... There is a river here where the water lock goes over, right? Mm, that's not really a river. That's more like a canal. Okay. Um, but, I, I mean, I know that we have seen stuff on the other side of this water body, so I don't think it's a sea because that would be okay. too big. All right. Um, crap. I wish the game would make us do a check. <laughs> or is it just maybe it doesn't matter what we pick? Maybe. So what did she say again? Uh, she said, uh, or we ask, where are you exactly? We cannot say for certain. East must be. We have only recently been detailed. Da, da, da. Um, and then, can you see Martinez from where you are? And she says, Martinez, Martinez. That is to the west, yes? Well, west of what? West of her, I guess. Well, how, well we don't know where she... This is confusing. Yeah. But I mean, she said, or west of Ravashaw, like in the western part, is that the case? I don't think Martinez is to the... Yes, actually, I think it is. So Then let's just say yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I like how we managed this, Vincent. I'm very pleased. Yeah. Mm. Right, because west of us is only the water. Yeah, okay. I so, think we cracked the case. Yes, look across Wide the open. river. Wide open. We are adjusting our viewfinder. Yes, we are looking at the river now. There are small islands in the middle of it. That sounds it's good. Very nice, actually. Well, you should see it from down here. <laughs> Interesting. The west of the city looks very different from the east. There's a large motorway dividing it nearly in half. Yes. We picked the right it must one. Be the 881, no? Mm -hmm. And we can say exactly. Follow that west for a few kilometers until you see the lake. Oh, it's like, okay. Um, or number two, maybe follow the motorway as far as it goes. Or number three, a motorway? I have no idea what you're talking about. No, that's the motorway 77 or whatever, right? The one we have the thought about? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but how does that help? I, I think we just keep going with the first uh, uh, option. Exactly. What did that say here? Follow, the, follow that west for a few kilometers until you see the lake. Because um, we know it goes to the yeah. pale, that would be the top, uh, second option. Yeah. And Which is intriguing in a way. <clears throat> yeah. To have a look at that. But what's she going to see? Just pale, right? Yeah. So, fuck that. And but you're right. Option, yeah. the, the one, the number one would lead her to us. And I guess the big body of water, sorry that we, get, I guess, never figured this out, but it's just a big lake, right? Mm -hmm. Where 
like, what was her name? Oh, was her name also Marianne? No, the Fisher lady that we had a date with. Oh, uh, Lillian. Lillian, sorry. That's where she goes to fish, right? Yes. Okay, makes so. sense to me. So, number one. Very well. Now, we're looking at an area <clears throat> that seems to be in urgent need of revitalization. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sounds you good. Got it. <laughs> now, we see the lake, and around that, a rather vibrant looking city quarter. There are some large buildings from the turn of the century, you would guess. Yes, this must be the heart of the district. Yeah, um, that's, that's the other side, right? Where there's actual good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we only have one option, mm. and that's to say, that's Jamrock. Now, look to the north, towards the harbor. Okay. Mm. Ah, so that is Martinez. A distended pause. A slight chill of embarrassment. <laughs> she isn't sure what to say. Yeah, and we can say, that bad, huh? <laughs> or number two. This is good. What do you see? <clears throat> I like number one. Yeah. Yeah. Keeps it human. It is quite striking <laughs> compared to where we're from. There are a great many destroyed buildings still. And we don't see any horses. It's really nothing like the eastern side of the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said there's no horses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God damn. We need our horses. Man, I hope the sequel is in Jamrock or something. If yeah. there's a sequel. Well, there was supposed to be a show. I know. I need to talk to you about that. <laughs> anyway, what mm -hmm. else? But what's most striking are the people. They just... We don't even know how to say it. What did she say at the last? We don't even know how to say it. Right. They're sort of walking corpses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we can say number one. Uh, look like a bunch of tiny apes duking it out on a great big ball. Oh, <laughs> hearkening back, huh? Uh, number two, look like a bunch of lost souls wandering about in indescribable pain. <laughs> number three, look happy and well adjusted. Or um, number four, look like ants. Isn't that what they are? No. What they say? Number one. Perhaps. We do not generally reach for such evocative imagery, but there is something rather desperate about him. And then, there's all the tear line about. It's very unpleasant to look at. We're going to widen our viewfinder a bit. <laughs> but <I've collect> <laughs> yeah, just to look away. We've collected all the bottles. We, we, we say, I, I sometimes have trouble understanding her. What did she say all the huh <laughs> about? Uh, and then there's all the tear lying about. Tear? Tear. Yeah. Oh, that's the bottles. Exactly. I see. Okay. Yeah. No, but we collected them all, so I don't see her point. We tried to help. Yeah. Maybe she can help us find more bottles. <laughs> yeah. Right. We should ask her. Vincent, that. you're obsessed with these <laughs> bottles. <laughs> That's free money. Um, uh, yeah. We we can say, I guess they should really install some recycling bins or something. Mm. Or we can just proceed by saying, Do you see a roundabout with an equest equestrian statue? Yeah. Do that one. A roundabout. Around about. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes, we see the monument. But there seems to be a man on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> nice! We did it, Vincent! Yes! This must be good. <laughs> Figured it out. Yeah. And we can say, number one, that's me! And we wave. Uh, we can also say, number mm. two. Oh, right. People climb on mon monuments all the time here. Oh, come it's on. Kind of a local tradition. Or number three. You say he seems like a handsome man. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing on Friday night? <laughs> no, I don't want to like gamble with this away. Yeah. Number also, one. do we really want to date with like a quarter of humanity? You know, that's a good point. She does seem sort of cold. You know, just widening the view like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, number one. That's you. We have to say. Irregular, Firewalker. What are you doing on top of the public monument? Uh, we can say number one. Listen, Archer. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> Martinez is a disco town. <laughs> Option number two. Hmm. I guess you could say it's sort of a performance piece. Or can we just tell her that we're using it as an antenna? That would be reasonable, but we are not reasonable, Miles. Fuck. We have. Only third option, and that's his. 
it's kind of an involved story. Well, the, hmm. huh? What do we say here? I, why can't we just say it's how I'm talking to you right now? Yeah, we climbed up here and we had changed some stuff up here to talk to you. About. Okay, we say the disco thing. Nice. Martinez is a disco town. How interesting. In Messina, disco has been extinct for more than a decade. <laughs> Funny how the past always is more present in some parts of the world. In any event, it is certainly interesting to see you, even from afar. Most of the time, we signalers just have to imagine what our interlocutors look like. Liebling, bitte. Er ist unser einziges Kind. That's the same line all the time. Mm -hmm. Please, dear, repeat the only child. So. I guess you've got about two questions left. Oh, crap. Okay. <laughs> we got sort of sidetracked there. Yeah, but it was helpful. Yeah. So what else? Come again. You're picking up more interference. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So w we have um, two questions left. What does the moral intern really want? And when is real democracy coming to Ravasha? And I then guess, we can proceed. Yeah. With I guess these are the two questions that Noib means. Yeah, unless yeah. the last option, the proceed option, is also one of the... Yeah, but that would be a real dick move by the game. Yeah. I don't think so. So just do the next one. What does the moral intern really want? A very important question with a very simple answer. We want humanity to endure. Beyond that, it may be said that we are the inheritors and stewards of Dolores Day's legacy. <gasps> Dolores Day. <gasps> I like where this is going. Yes. Dolores Day. <laughs> So, so beautiful. Is that Edmund? That's pain threshold. Ha! <laughs> okay, interesting. Huh. Um, it, because she's so painful to look at, right? Sometimes beautiful things are mm -hmm. painful to look at. Yeah. Um, and we can say, Dolores Day. She was really beautiful, right? Or we can say, right. And uh, that legacy is... No, do number one. But that isn't what made her so remarkable. Not true. Her <laughs> beauty was like a glowing coil on a hot stove, and yet you felt blessed to touch it. She was the greatest innocent, the single most consequential being to have ever lived. Her legacy touches every aspect of modern life. Is this how we can offer a figure to Dolores Day? I hope. Mm. You think? Well, we'll see. Yeah, I would be surprised, but yeah. We're uh, basically talking to a sky god, so... That's true. And she looks sort of like a figure in her portrait. Mm, we'll see. Well, uh, this lady certainly likes Dolores Day, so that's good. Yes. Uh, and we say, right, and that legacy is... Immeasurable. It includes interisolar travel, three scientific revolutions, humanism, internationalism, the welfare state, and balance of terror theory. Nothing less than the intellectual foundation of our modern order. The role of the moralist international is twofold. To buy humanity sufficient time to perfect itself. And to patiently guide it along the road while protecting it from ideological highwaymen and eschatologists. Alright. Um, That's a good description of our sort of governing ideology. <laughs> yeah. Protecting us from ideological highwaymen. I, I guess it sounds a little too, <laughs> like, kind. Yeah. There are more realistic takes on it, I guess. But yeah, the interesting way to phrase I mean, it is what I'm trying asking, to say. We're asking a person who chose to work for them. Yeah, sure. Would you say she's biased a little bit? <laughs> little. <laughs> yeah. So what else? Uh, we can ask, what is this balance of terror theory? Sure. Number two. In what sense is the moral intern the steward of Dolores Day's legacy? Number three, who are the highwaymen and eschatologians you mentioned? Eschatology, I think. Eschatologians. <laughs> sure. Uh, number four, where does the RCM fit into all of this? And then what awaits us at the end of the road? And Man, we proceed. we're way past Noid's two question limit. <laughs> uh -huh. So fuck him, just ask away. What is the balance of terror theory? It's an elegant idea, one of the cornerstones of the modern era. In short, it holds that durable, lasting peace is possible 
when the major powers are capable of inflicting an acceptable and irreversible destruction upon one another. <laughs> See, mm -hmm. it is our world. Yeah. Because no rational state is willing to accept the risk of such a calamity befalling its own people. All powers are incentivized to de-escalate conflict before they reach the point of no return. Uh, we can ask, and has it worked? Or, but what if states aren't rational? But what if states aren't rational? A state is like any other living thing. It wants to survive and grow. A state that doesn't value its own existence is not a state at all. Alright, that may have been a good sentence to get out of her. Hmm. For whatever we intend to do later. Mm -hmm. And then the next question. In what sense is a moral intern the steward of Dolores Day's legacy? Mm -hmm. It was established by many of the same founding party members who elected Dolores Day and who, after her assassination, dedicated their lives to the continuation of her political and intellectual project. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. Who are the highwaymen? Mm -hmm. There are many. The communists say they are the next dialectical step in an inexorable spiral of progress. They claim to have resolved the inherent contradictions of moralism and believe they're just one revolution away from establishing a humanist paradise. The fascists say they are both the ancestors of and the successors to the lawyerism. In other words, they believe that Dolores Day's reign simply represents a glorious phase of expansion within a greater Franco-Nigerian heritage. They criticize the DeLorean project for accepting and integrating new peoples rather than forcefully subjugating them. And then, there are our prodigal cousins, the Vazan Social Democrats, who hold our same values and have even adopted many of our same rights and iconography, though they persist in rejecting the umbrella of moralism. For some reason, it's the Social Democrats she sounds most exasperated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're close to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, the others are lost cases, but... They're, they're obviously outside, but... The, yeah. The, the, yeah. Uh, we can ask, why do you resent social democrats sure. more than communists and fascists? Or are there non-ideological threats to human, humanity's future? No, do number one. We don't resent them. It's more that we are disappointed <laughs> that they have chosen to emphasize certain points of dispute over broad areas of accord. She speaks of them like a family member she's abandoned hope of ever maturing. But of course, they also remain dependable partners in a number of centrist governing coalitions. All right. Okay. And then, the last question. Where does the RCM fit into all sure. this? The RCM exists under the umbrella of the coalition, just as the coalition exist under the umbrella of the moral intern. At the same time, the RCM is not exactly of the coalition. What do you mean it's not of the coalition? Mm -hmm. Or number two, you mean because of the decomptage? Or number three, that's confusing. Do number two because it's a, a cool term to throw in. Mm -hmm. We are not that familiar with RCM lore and practice, but we believe that may be the case. As we recall, the decomptage originated with the Revachalian commune itself. There is some truth to that. The lieutenant whispers into his headset. Glad to hear he's still here. Mm -hmm. But in a practical sense, it's the responsibility of the ethics division to ensure that both organizations are working towards the same end. Okay. And then we can ask, so you're saying the RCM is a vestige of Revachal's communist past? Hmm. Or number two, why bother with the RCM at all? Can't the coalition just run everything itself? I want to know number two. Hmm. Haven't we? Hmm. I want to hear it from her. Yeah, okay. Because the coalition has no interest in running Ravashaw. Hmm. We succeed in our own mission the moment Ravashaw rejoins the international community as a sovereign democracy. The RCM is an integral piece of that project. Okay. That's interesting because I believe what we've heard before though I don't know from whom was that the RCM was a part of the peace contract after the revolution yeah but does that contradict what she just said 
Mm, no. Just, I mean, it depends uh, on the terms of the contract. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can't claim to understand any of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as usual with a moral intern, they just um, talk a lot. <laughs> the politics stuff is... Mm. Oh. But, yeah. I do want to, like, see if we can get them to take some responsibility. Well, here's a good thing. We are at the final question. Right. What awaits us at the end of the road? Sure. Let us answer your question with a question. No. Have you ever seen evening fall over the old town of Espeserashi? What evening fall? Have you ever seen evening fall over the old town of... I'm not going to pronounce it. All right. Some beautiful scene. Yes. Uh, we can say maybe. I've been forgetting things lately. <laughs> or no, I haven't. No, the, the second one. This is a rhetorical question. Play mm -hmm. along. Do number one. Number one, maybe. Oh, sorry. It's number two. The first option is maybe. I've been forgetting things lately. Yeah, okay. Or the second option is no, I haven't. And there's no third? No. Then do number one. If you had, then you would remember. It is one of the great wonders of the world. Impossible to mistake or forget. The heart of the city, the old town, is a district composed of weather marks, comprising thousands of columns and arcades, arranged around a series of grand plazas. During the day, it's a beautiful sight, equal to any of the great cities of Pericarnassus. But as the sun sets, the shadows cast by those columns and arcades weave together to form an intricate ombre lattice. When you see it, you suddenly understand. It was all built for you, for this very moment. The name at Vesperoskit means evening comes. Hmm. Vespers, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we can say number one, built for me. Or number two, built by whom? Or we can say nothing. Built for me? For you, for all of humanity. Not only that, but you, you are also part of the centrist long plan. When you cross one of the open plazas, your own shadows is effortlessly woven into the great latticework, a deliberate synthesis of humanity, art, and the natural world. And we can either say beautiful, or we can say impossible. Those are the only two options. Yes. Hmm. Well, I, I'd rather think about things that are beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that's been sort of the theme here, so yes. let's say that. Yes, it is. We grew up there. We have seen the lattice with our own eyes. <laughs> now she's saying we, but it doesn't sound <laughs> plural at all. Uh, no. She's just talking about herself. Uh-huh. Uh, and we only have a uh, chance to say the name of the uh, city or town. And then Dolores Day was crowned there, wasn't she? Uh -huh. There are even those who say that at Vesperasit summoned Dolores Day, or that it was built in preparation for her, centuries before her arrival. That's why the old town is sometimes called the ceremonial heart of humanity. Of course, such a city does not spring from nowhere, nor does it endure without effort. Its construction was the work of many generations, and its preservation is an equally monumental responsibility. Now we can say number one, how much time does this humanity need to achieve its potential? Or number two, we say nothing and just look around. I don't know, why Why should we, does the game want us to say nothing? Why, I want to do number one. Yeah, me too. Not sure what's up with these say nothing options. Yeah. About 3,000 years. <laughs> oh, I like how that just came quick. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we know the figure. Uh, it's actually 2,979 now. Um, yeah. uh, we can say, number one, that sounds like a very long time. Mm -hmm. Number two, that sounds like an impossibly long time. Mm -hmm. Number three, 3,000 years is just the blink of an eye. We need much more than that. Or number four, that sounds about right, actually. <laughs> 
I kind of want to say number four. It sounds <laughs> yeah, about right. Uh -huh. You too? Let's do it. It is, in all senses, the most moderate and reasonable projection possible based on current science. Of course. Moderate and reasonable. Yeah. Sounds like my kind of people. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Final question time. I can already feel our alignment getting shaky. Is everything all right? We love the connection for a moment. Right. Okay. Um, we have a final question. Mm -hmm. When is real democracy coming to our show? Or we can say, listen, I really need to reach the committee of responsibility and proceed. Which. Well, but I, st I stick to my theory yeah. that mm -hmm. all of the those options can be taken. Okay. When is real democracy coming? It is coming as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> you have reached the democracy hotline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please We're hold. doing our best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The technician is already on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, so we can say, number one, in a few months then, <laughs> or number two, within a couple of years, surely, or number three. Within my lifetime? Within my lifetime? Oh, most likely. <laughs> Though, of course, it depends on the contingencies. W what do you mean, contingencies? You must understand, the moral intern is responsible for ensuring the continuance and flourishing of mankind for the next 3,000 years. The planning division must account for a great many possible outcomes and chance events. Fortunately, we have contingency spreads to help guide our decision making. Of course, there is no one spread that can reasonably account for all these possible events. But at least, we are able to prepare for the most likely eventualities. And we can ask, wait, how do these contingencies, uh, contingency spreads actually work? Or we can just proceed by saying, so where does Revachol fit into these contingencies? Do the wait option. <coughs> our area of expertise, but we can try to explain. Picture a smooth hill made from fresh dirt. Now, if you stand atop this hill and put a glass of water over it, what will happen? It's made of what? Uh, picture a smooth hill made from fresh dirt. Dirt, okay. Well, it soaks up the water. Yeah. Uh, well, we, we can say, number one, the dirt will get wet. Mm -hmm. Or, number two, I won't have any water. <laughs> or number three, the water will run down the hill. Yeah, number one. You're thinking about this metaphor too, literally. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry. I didn't know where you were going. It's not our metaphor. <laughs> Who better metaphor? The point is that we know only that the water will run down. Oh, but okay. not what course it will take. If we place a rock in the water's path, Will it divert to the left or to the right? We cannot say. Hmm. But we may predict which way it might run in either event. That is the essence of the idea. You might I also see. imagine these spreads as a kind of tree, with every juncture representing a different event, and every branch representing a different timeline. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting, because she said the point is that we know only that the water will run down, but not what course, course it will take. Yeah. But then we, uh, she said, uh, whether to go to the left or right, we cannot say, but we may predict which way it might run in either event. So as so she's saying... Well, in either event, event it will run down, is what she's saying. Hmm, okay. At least how I'm reading her. Yeah. The, uh, but I uh, think her metaphor is not... Like, mm -hmm. not, the, yeah. not her best work. Talk more about Dolores. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can say, you're saying the moral intern uses contingency spreads to see the future? Sure. Not exactly. <laughs> no one can know the future. But with contingency spreads, it is possible to predict what the future realities might reasonably look like. But we shouldn't overstate their importance. They are simply one of many tools used by the moral intern to set policy. And then we say, so where does Rovershall fit into these, into these contingencies? Sure. That's impossible to say. It may be that Rovershall has a great role to play, or no role at all. 
That is the nature of contingency. But didn't the Wild Pines representative say that Revachol would resolve history? Thanks, game, for reminding us. Mm -hmm. Fuck, now I'm also using plural. <laughs> <laughs> you must understand, when we speak of contingency spreads, we are talking about the most fantastically complex data visualization human beings are capable of producing, with thousands of events, from elections and wars to natural disaster or scientific miracles, and millions of possible outcomes. Mm -hmm. It may be the case that, under certain scenarios, Revachol is vitally important, as it was during the collision landings in OA. It may also be the case, in many other equally plausible scenarios, that the Revachol is simply another once great city, like countless others throughout the history. Yes, that does sound contingent. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we can say number one. Rorschach was founded to resolve history. It's the most important city in the world. Or number two, we look around and say, yeah, this is definitely a place whose time has passed. So number one is from the skill success, I think, and we mm -hmm. should take it, therefore. Okay. Perhaps, perhaps not. The world is full of great cities that have resolved the questions of their time. La Chert, Bradford, our own home of Adversterasche. It's even possible the cities that will resolve the questions of the future have not been founded yet. For this reason, responsibility for developing contingency spreads is only assigned to highly trained analysts working with advanced radio computers and a steady supply of drones. Yeah, okay. It's a technocracy. Sort of. Yeah, sort of. I agree. Uh, we can say number one. Okay, but I still want to know when real democracy is coming. Okay. Uh, we also have the option to say number two. How do I access my personal contingency spread? <laughs> And number three, enough of this. I have another question. No, number one. Of course. While the content of individual contingency spreads is deeply classified, many degrees beyond our access, everything we have heard from the Provisional Commission indicates that the transition is proceeding according to the appropriate timetable. Well, that's very reassuring. Again. Yeah. I don't think we're going to get more out of her. She didn't answer the question at all. But well, she doesn't know. It's yeah, okay. Probably. Uh, we can uh, say, does this mean democracy is here? And we look around. Or number two, but what if some people want democracy to come faster? I, I'm getting sort of tired of this dialogue <laughs> line, but <laughs> do, I guess <coughs> number one. <clears throat> That's always the case with these moral interns. Right now, it's more like a simple sea, <clears throat> buried out of sight. And we can ask, what are you talking about? Or number two, I met a gardener earlier, but then she turned out to be a lawyer. Is she involved somehow? What the fuck? I, I feel that like is so random, we have to take it. I feel like we're losing Harry as well. <laughs> yeah, but there's no good option here, really. No. So number two. Gardeners and lawyers are both essential to a beautiful and well-functioning society, <laughs> but we are referring to something else. The first phase of democratization. Soon, the people at Revasho will vote for slates of candidates who will make up the Transitional Advisory Council that will oversee the second phase of democratization. And we can ask, what's this Transitional Advisory Council? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, number two, who picks the slates of candidates. Or we can conclude by saying, how many of these phases are there until we have real democracy? I'll do number one. The Council is modeled after similar bodies developed in a number of transitional democracies. Its role is to devise and shape the future institutions of Revachalian democracy, according to local conditions. Local conditions, in this case, referring to incompetence, graft, and violence. <laughs> Sure. Mm -hmm. Once elected, council members will even have the opportunity to join one of several officially sanctioned political wings, depending <laughs> on their ideological beliefs and policy preferences. Yeah, you get to pick sides. Yeah, but a little bit. Don't be a highwayman. Yeah. <laughs> and for God forbid, being a social democrat. 
Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, we can ask, what do these wings represent? Sure. A very important question. The wings are carefully selected to represent a wide spectrum of political thought. <laughs> that is carefully moderated by yeah, us. <laughs> sure. Typically, there's a liberal technocratic wing, a social democratic wing, and even a conservative populist wing. You wouldn't believe some of the ideas they express, but a vibrant and free political culture requires that all perspectives be given voice, even those many may find objectionable. Sure, free speech and all. Mm -hmm. uh, next question, who picks the slates of mm -hmm. candidates? In most cases, the provisional council selects them from a cross-section of the local population to ensure the slates actually reflect the people they represent. Of course, such a situation is not ideal. We would all prefer for the Vashalians to nominate the representatives directly. But that is why it's a provisional council. And then we conclude by saying how many of these phases are there until we have real democracy? Sure. Our best theoreticians believe that three to five phases are appropriate for states that lack strong democratic tradition, which would certainly apply to Ravashal. But we must stress that real democracy is an ongoing process and not simply an outcome. It must be cultivated and preserved if it is to endure. And we say, like the city of Wedderlers, Day is from. Oh, okay. You mean? Sure. Exactly. It's been a long winter. Long and cold. Oh, no. Bad news, no man. Signal's going down. These waves are receding. Time to let go. But Walker, are you there? And uh, we can say, hang on, Archer. I meant to ask you about the Committee of Responsibility. Yeah, maybe we won't get to do that. Yeah, uh, or we can say, sorry, I messed up and we ran out of time. Yeah, maybe we did. <laughs> Do the hang on, though. Fire worker, please repeat. Your signal is very weak. I said I meant to ask you about the committee, uh, committee of responsibility. I cannot help me to see a Nothing important, but connection. Going to update the original <laughs> And the line goes quiet. <laughs> well, crap, then. <laughs> All this. Yeah, but I guess, okay game, if you don't want to, like, show us sort of the punchline, then I guess not. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. The lieutenant gives a long sigh as he removes his headphones. He looks up at you. I think it's best for you to climb off the statue now, detective. Your real work is done here. Well, we learned a lot, I guess. We gained 30 XP. Yeah. We completed the task, and uh, we can say, just give me a minute, and we could stay up there. Yeah, sure, stay for a while. The sun-warmed bronze tingles beneath your fingertips and between your thighs. Your legs have grown stiff. You've been up here quite a while. You look around. The strike breakers are still shouting their slogans and waving their hand-painted signs beneath you. The Lieutenant and the Speed Freak have begun disconnecting a few cables. You could stay a while longer if you wanted. Sure, stay longer. Out on the bay, a pair of dinghies bob and roll in the waves. The breeze drags the voices of the fishermen toward the plaza, faint and indecipherable. Further out, a few dirty icebergs drift to and fro. Further still, at the outer edge of your recognizance, the ancient ruins of the sea fort lay piled on the horizon. Everything all right, detective? And we can say, I'm fine. Or, I don't know, maybe. Um, I would say I'm fine if he says it really sarcastically, <laughs> but we can't assume that, so mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe. Listen. I understand that you're disappointed that things did not turn out how you might have hoped. But that's just how things go. We all must accept our own shortcomings and limitations. Now come on. We still have a long day ahead of us. Hey, 5 XP. And we... Yeah, that's nice. Climb down. I mean, I don't think that anything would have come of it, right? If we have asked about the committee. Hmm. But 
I still feel bummed out. I don't know how you feel. I feel it's lame that we basically didn't get to do it because, well, you know, misinterpreting the game's conditions. Yeah. Well, I don't know what would happen if, uh, if we had talked to her about it. I wonder if it would Well, I would have liked a check, you know, that's all. At the end, to wrap it up, makes it yeah, feel... Because yeah. that system mm. works so well, the collecting bonuses and then yeah. doing the check. That's fun. And now it just feels like, okay, thanks. Now I went through all the exposition dump mm -hmm. and there's no payoff. Yeah. Like, why? What's the point? Was it really like an interesting sort of strategic decision? Which question to skip, I guess? Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. I yeah, think here's how I would have fixed it if I was the designer at mm -hmm. that last step where we have only both questions remaining you just add conclude be behind each of them you know what I mean oh, yeah, so then okay. it's mm -hmm. obvious and unmistakable that this will be your last choice mm -hmm. yeah but oh well I guess we yeah. have to watch on YouTube what happens if we <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean this is also I feel like this has maybe come up once before maybe but apart from that like the game has always allowed us to, um, yeah, just ask all the questions. Yeah, that's so why we misinterpreted. Yeah. Well, well, I think it's also supposed mm. to make you feel bummed out. Honestly, <laughs> that also fits with the game. Yeah, I mean, the, this dialogue with Kim is obviously made exactly for that. Yeah, and I also like like how this happens when you stand on the statue and you like after having this sort of mm -hmm. historical wide angle. Mm conversation then you look around this broken down place and it's sort of it's very poetic yeah i kind of like it <clears throat> even if i'm bummed also yeah poetic is the right word because we we got up here to figure out how to um get responsibility yeah right and this is now we are above everybody else looking down at everybody else <laughs> l like the warship archer is yeah yeah and it's not really a comfortable position it's not it's not no. the solution either no. I think we have to, I think the point is, Vincent, we have to get down and into the mix. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I like that. We, yeah. we, have to, we have to get shit done. Yeah. Not just sit it's, up you there. You can't just sit up there and, yeah. like, uh, regulate things from committees. And speak for 1.5 billion people or yeah. something. Yeah, this, uh, this is not our way. Yeah, so we That's climb not disco. down. Yes. About time. You grab that amp and get the cables. Need to leave some evidence of our antenna to inspire future generations. <laughs> That's great. All right. Uh, what's one more trip across the water dock? All right. Fade to black as usual. <clears throat> We're back in the church. Mm -hmm. And still in dialogue. Oh, okay. But still faded to black. Quite cool. Ah. We've held up more than our share of this collaboration. I hope you recognize how much the hardcore underground came through for you. Oh, he's right. Yeah. If you want to show your appreciation, we can still use your help. Egg is the one to talk to. Hardcore! Oh, we have not forgotten about that. <laughs> nope. Uh, we can say, I would never let my hardcore brothers down. Sure. Or... I've got my own case to worry about, mm -hmm. but if I have time, I'll be back. Number one. Sure. You have to say that now, but it's all right. Dude. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't be such a bummer. <laughs> we have worked with you for, like, days. <laughs> yeah. I'll put this tech away later. Think there's an extra can set in case you want to grab a souvenir or something. Don't think anyone will miss it. Wait, can All we right. actually loot anything? <laughs> oh yeah, there is loot. What, in the church? Specialist grade headset. Mm. Plus two inland empire, minus one reaction speed. That's cool. Mm -hmm. We should wear that. Oh. I love inland empire. What does that replace? Is it a hat? I guess. Makes sense. What, are, what is our current hat? Our current hat is the RCM lieutenant's cap, plus mm. one authority. Yeah. Put on those headphones. Nice. That's cool. I guess we hear transmissions now, and that's yeah. That's that's cool. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it says a giant pair of cans to keep you safe from the world. This particular set seems to have changed hands several times. May become sweaty after extended use. 
Yeah, that, t- tell me about it. <laughs> I've got these things on. Uh-huh. And it's hot today. Anyway, I think that's it for us today. We did, we just did the whole like airship thing. Yeah. And honestly, not that much came of it, but well, maybe that's the point. L- let me see. Do we get a bonus with iCat now? No, of course not. No, but we got some XP. Yeah. You know, that's true. we might um, get there eventually. Um, I'm hoping for one more level up. Yeah. A- anyway, we'll get to that next time, mm. I think. There's a little bit to do before we get to the island. We'll see. But this was sort of fun or at least interesting. Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. You can subscribe to the channel and you can leave us some comments if you like. We always appreciate that. And um, yeah, thank you, Vince, for uh, reading to me oh, and playing with me. Up. Do you have any last words? Uh, no, I think it's time we cut the connection. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>